Johannesburg Mayor Jeff Makubo is expected to appear at the state capture inquiry to answer to allegations of corruption on Friday. Makubo has this week been at the center of alleged payments received from IT company EOH. Now, the allegations include payment and donations via a company owned by Makubo who was then the Johannesburg MMC for finance. Now, one of the individuals who has accused uh, Makubo of corruption in the city of Johannesburg is uh, the former mayor of this very city, Johannesburg, Herman Mashaba, and uh, he's now the leader of uh, Action SA. He joins us, as well as uh, my colleague, Dumaul Mthaudi, who has been uh, watching developments at the State Capture Commission of Inquiry. Gentlemen, uh, my thank you to the two of you. Let me start right here uh, in studio. Give us a sense, just the highlights of what was said at that commission, in particular around Jeff Makubo and the connection to EOH. Well, the connection with Jeff Makubo to EOH is that uh, apparently uh, he was at the center of uh, agreements that were entered into with EOH by the city of Johannesburg at the time, yeah. uh, which involved surprise, surprise, advanced payments uh, that were made. And uh, these go against, of course, the legislation uh, that governs uh, EOH, I mean, um, that governs the, 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 the financial transaction that the city was able to enter into. And uh, so this is what was at the heart, essentially, of the testimony. But then also the money trails also um, suggested that EOH uh, paid, uh, you know, a various um, high-ranking ANC members. Of course, the name of uh, Zizi Gorda mm -hmm. uh, came up. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, Mr. Makubu will have a lot to answer to because uh, he was in uh, the head of the financial uh, uh, section of the city of Johannesburg at the time. So he would have been aware or maybe not because his name also comes implicated in terms of making calls to directors of EOH and suggesting that uh, they would need to uh, divert funds and uh, make payments uh, in order to uh, pay for bills and salaries apparently uh, at the ruling party. All right. Well, Mr. Mashaba, this is where you come in. You have always accused Jeff Makubo of um, underhanded behavior, to put it lightly. When you hear this kind of information, this kind of evidence coming out of uh, the State Capture Commission of Inquiry, does it put paid to your claims, your longstanding claims, that Jeff Makubo had a lot to answer for when it came to contracts that were awarded by the city of Johannesburg to certain companies. Well, thank you very much, Goli and Tumel uh, and, and the listeners. Uh, I think uh, what we heard yesterday at the Zondo Commission is the tip of an iceberg uh, regarding Jeff Makubu's involvement in corruption. I think uh, Jeff, uh, when he joined the city of Johannesburg, he was already an agent uh, saving and working for the Gupta family. So when he joined uh, the city as a councillor and eventually Pakistan put him as an MMC. He wasn't put as an MMC to serve the residents of Johannesburg. He was there to serve the interests of the government. Mm. Uh, Mr. Mashaba, I, I want you to be specific with us. At the time that you made these claims against Jeff Makubo, was EOH one of the companies that you have always suspected? Or is EOH news to you, as we heard yesterday? Totally used to me with uh, with overwhelming evidence. I'm sure Koli and Tumelu, you are aware. I think about a month ago, uh, a section SA, we started um, a private prosecution, particularly Jeff as one of the people targeted, and uh, requesting N NPA to allow us to prosecute uh, Jeff uh, privately because uh, the evidence against the Jeff is overwhelming. And uh, this issue with um, uh, with this company yesterday, it's a tip of an iceberg. I think there are numerous cases. As you are aware, the city of Johannesburg, the three years as a mayor, we discovered 34 billion rands worth of corruption, uh, over 6,000 cases, which are personally brought to the attention of the president of the country about uh, 18 months ago. Mm. I brought them to the attention of the ANC uh, Commission, uh, commission, I wrote to Isma Hashule to let him know that uh, we are sitting with your challenge and I needed his intervention because our enforcement agencies were reluctant to prosecute. Yeah, okay, we're going to come back to you about that very claim that the prosecuting authority is simply refusing to go after Jeff Makubo. Let's come back to studio now. Dumaule, 
There is a company that is run by Jeffrey Makubo, and yes. that is Moneluane Consulting. Yes. Did that company get monies from EOH, and what were they for? The simple answer is yes. That company, according to the forensic investigator who was uh, um, testifying before the Zonda Commission of Inquiry, did get monies, numerous payments uh, over a period of months, in fact years, from around 2015, 2016, and it stopped as late as 2017. Um, some of the payments <clears throat> as much as uh, 500,000 rand, uh, some of them even more, uh, some of them 20,000, 50,000 here and there. The company did get the money. Where the money went to, is another question. This is where the forensic investigator linked uh, the name of Reggie Ngabinde, yeah. uh, saying that, of course, there was another shelf company that he was involved with, and the money seems to have found its way to Ngabinde, mm. and that would be to pay for certain uh, events for the ANC, including tents, including buses, uh, for certain commemorative events. This was what was scheduled for, or what was uh, given as uh, the reason for the money to be uh, sent out. No invoices were given, though, and uh, no due processes in terms of how you meant to uh, send monies out. It was almost as if uh, this uh, request was made overnight and uh, they found emails and uh, uh, certain communications that didn't follow proper channels in terms of procurement. procurement. And then monies were then handed out and there was no invoices and nothing to show that the services were actually ever delivered. Something very interesting also came out about monies that were coming from EOH into Moneluane Consulting. A certain amount of money was in the account of this company, Moneluane Consulting, and it was, it was, I think, about 63 rands, if I'm not mistaken. How could a company, a whole company, if indeed it is in business, yes. have that much money in its bank account before massive amounts come in? Unless, of course, this was a shelf company. And this is the concern that was raised uh, uh, by the forensic specialist who was uh, you know, testifying before the uh, Zondo Commission of Inquiry, saying that if due diligence had been done, uh, when you look at 63 rands in terms of operating budget, a, a company uh, that has to you know, deal with large payments in terms of the scope of work that was supposed to be done for IT services yeah. needs to have a track record uh, to show that it's got financial management and sound uh, financial accounting in order to qualify. Let's yeah. not even worry about the payments in order to qualify yeah. uh, for a process uh, to be considered uh, to get uh, those particular tenders that were issued out. But then again, the issue of tendering went right out the window as uh, it was testified before the Commission of Inquiry. There we go. Mr. Mashab, you've got to tell us whether you know anything about Moleluane Consulting. This is a company we understand Jeffrey Makubo owns. And whether or not the companies that you suspected were involved in allegations of corruption with Makubo. Did this company exist in your realm of speculation around corruption that involved uh, Jeffrey Makubo? Well, uh, uh, Goli and uh, Dumelo, wait until tomorrow when Jeff appears uh, before the commission. Um, I'm sure you've heard of a company called Regiment Capital. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, what we picked up while um, uh, GFIS was doing uh, investigation, just uh, from uh, regiment, this Gupta Link company, 30 million rands, what, that's what we could um, uh, uncover. And even Jeff himself does not really dispute that. Uh, working for, um, for the Guptas, uh, being paid a commission for being a facilitator between uh, the Guptas and, and the city of Johannesburg. Uh, that, um, that's something that is coming out tomorrow. And um, I'm sure Jeff is not going to deny it because obviously he knows there are bank statements to that effect. Yeah. While the man was saying it's an MMC or finance. EOH mm. and the ANC. The forensic investigator who was giving evidence at the State Capture Commission of Inquiry yesterday, Stephen Powell. Yes. He had a description of what he would define the relationship or describe the relationship between the ANC and EOH would be. What, what was his description of this relationship? In a nutshell, Koli, his description was this relationship was generally corrupt, uh, that this relationship was not of any mutual benefit, especially to EOH. We know that as a result 
of this relationship where EOH uh, was leaned on uh, by those who were uh, implicated and named in terms of the payments that went out. Um, it led to a situation where EOH completely collapsed and lost its licensing agreement with Hold Microsoft. On. Hold on. How could the relationship between EOH and the ANC be described as corrupt when EOH was a donor to the ANC and to use Jeff's words in one of the emails, he's, he describes the help that they were receiving from EOH as aiding democracy. This is to aid democracy. So how in the world does corruption uh, come in there? This is, this is the issue here, Cody, because donations uh, to political parties are not a problem because they are above board and they are noted in the books as such. Mm. But then when you have continuous payments that are going, which have no particular reference in terms of bookkeeping, uh, that they are not noted, what they are for, and uh, when you see the money trail, they go from one company to another shelf company, to yeah. another shelf company, to individuals. It becomes very suspicious because in a space of a few days, you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions, jumping around from several bank accounts and finding themselves suspiciously to companies or shelf companies linked to politically connected individuals for no services rendered. So there's a very, very clear distinction that uh, the witness drew uh, between donations which are upfront mm -hmm. and uh, those particular illicit types of payments that are tried to be cloaked under the veil of business. But when you look at the value add to the particular company or the service provider, there's none that anyone can speak of. Mr. Mashaba? This is where you come in. You, you run a political outfit. What you are hearing from my colleague here is that uh, these were termed uh, donations by Jeffrey Makubo and company and that uh, this was all in aid of democracy. Should they be described as democracy, these monies that flowed from, uh, should they be described as donations rather, these monies that flowed from EOH uh, to the ANC? I think totally if we are going to be treating direct corruption as, uh, uh, as an aid to democracy, what type, what type of democracy are we building? I think the democracy requires here yes, civil society, business, uh, or anyone else to make to political. So I'm sure totally you are aware when I launched um, the big dialogue on the 6th of December uh, to a large extent, uh, my family is being attacked. Family has been responding to funding this. What do I want from this? Is to save my country. We want uh, to come and see the money. What I want out of this is to save, uh, is to save my, my country. I don't really play in, in moving money from one entity to the other. I donate to South Africa, donate to political parties on the basis of strengthening democracy. But I don't expect anyone who donates to us because we've got now, uh, we do crowdfunding, people give us some money. One thing that we make it really very clear to anyone who wants to support us, support us because yes, we want to strengthen democracy, but you don't want anything in return outside the uh, safeguarding of our country. But unfortunately, the line to you, it keeps failing us. And maybe this is where we ought to uh, wrap uh, this conversation very briefly for me, very, very briefly before it fails us completely. Jeffrey Makubo goes to the State Capture Commission tomorrow to answer for what has been uh, told to that commission. Do you think he's a corrupt man? More than corrupt. Jeff, Jeff Makubo is supposed to be in jail three years ago, uh, doing at least 15 years. I mean, he's one of the most corrupt South Africans I've come across. Yo. All right. Uh, Hemin Mashaba, thank you very much for uh, making time to speak to us, uh, leader of uh, Action SA.